Forget about getting an ultra chip in the Mac Studio. Apple's M4 Max just came out and holy moly, it is absolutely insane. I've been testing it a ton and based on the test that I did in this video, absolutely do not buy an Ultra, whether it's the M2 Ultra right here or the M3 Ultra, which wasn't supposed to come until next week, but apparently got delivered today. I'm gonna do some testing on this bad boy. Seriously, forget about these two. The M4 Max is absolutely killing it. Whether you're doing photo editing, video editing, programming, Logic Pro music production, and so much more, I think you'll make a mistake by going with the Ultra because the M4 Max is more than good enough. So with that said, let's get into comparing the M4 Max versus the M2 Ultra that we've been using for the last couple of years as our main video editing system. So if you're wondering if you should get one of these used or just get the much less expensive M4 Max, this video is for you. Let's jump right into it. Now, first of all, I wanna show you guys the specs. This is actually the $2,500 model with the upgraded chip, which forces you to upgrade the RAM to 48 gigs, which if you're considering the Ultra, you probably should just upgrade the M4 Max chip anyway. And before we get into the performance test, the one thing I wanna mention is that this thing right here has Thunderbolt 5 versus Thunderbolt 4. Yes, it's only the four ports on the back the two on the front are USB-C, but it is a lot faster. 80 gigabytes per second bandwidth, which is just insane. And I do wanna mention that we actually, where is it? Here it is. We built a Thunderbolt 5 DIY custom SSD, which has four terabytes of storage. And believe it or not, this was actually faster than the built-in storage on the M4 Max MacBook Pro, and we did it for only 500 bucks with the best Samsung 990 Pro SSD built in, which does not have a cache limit. This thing just goes and goes compared to that OWC that slows down very quickly. Once again, 500 bucks instead of paying 1200 to upgrade to four terabytes on the Mac Studio. Seriously, just get this because you can take this with you. Whenever you upgrade your machine, you get to keep this and you can use this with your MacBooks, other laptops, anything else, just do this instead. I'll leave the links down below. Now jumping right into performance, we have the SSDs. Believe it or not, the M4 Max has faster read speed, 6400 compared to about 5200, but it actually flips when you look at the write speed. Somehow the M2 Ultra one terabyte, which by the way, yes, we did upgrade to one terabyte on this machine, just in case we are going to keep it, which we actually might seeing as it's that fast. The M2 Ultra in write speeds is a little bit faster. Now getting into the CPU, this has the latest gen M4 cores. So we have 4,074 single core, which is literally the best score in the world. No other chip can compete compared to 2640 on the M2 Ultra. That's literally 54% faster. Yes, some of it is because it's an ARM V9 chip, which has advantages like SME support, but still that is just insane. Now looking at multi-core, believe it or not, the M4 Max, the cheaper one with only 16 cores compared to 24, absolutely destroys it. Over 26,000 points compared to about 20,800 on the M2 Ultra. This is literally like the fastest chip, beating out Intel AMD chips that we have available right now. Of course, I wanted to test Speedometer 3.0 web browsing to see how snappy it is in terms of single core tasks like that. And yes, this is the fastest web browsing computer you can get, 485 destroying the M2 Ultra. We also decided to test web design using Figma with this project provided to us by 500 Designs, one of the best studios out of California. And believe it or not, the M4 Max is a lot faster. Take a look at that score. That is crazy fast. 109 compared to a minute 34. Now in terms of graphics performance, this one is actually quite interesting because the M4 Max comes with a 40 core GPU, the upgraded model, compared to 60 cores on this machine right here, the M2 Ultra. And crazy thing, it's almost as fast. 191,000 compared to 213,000, but Wait till you see the rest of the graphics tests that we ran, specifically things like 3 d Mark Steel Nomad Lite. Believe it or not, gaming performance is better on the M4 Max. A lot cheaper machine, 
better. 105 FPS compared to 92.8. We thought this was the best Mac for gaming. It no longer is, especially since we'll be testing the M3 Ultra here very soon. Now I also tested ray tracing with 3 d Mark's Solar Bay and holy smokes, basically like 50% faster on the M4 Max with literally only, what is it, like two thirds of the cores and it's destroying it. That is absolutely insane. And now we get into the big boy test. This is just crazy. We did Cinebench 2024, the 10 minute stress test. Believe it or not, the M4 Max won 2,008 points compared to 1,932 with only 16 cores compared to 24. That is just insane. It's destroying the Ultra. And the best part is that it had idle fans. It went up to only about, I think it was like 1,400 RPM. 1,000 is idle. And I literally put my ear up to it multiple times while testing couldn't hear a thing. Dead silence with 100% CPU workload. Of course, the M2 Ultra is the same. We actually tested the maximum temperatures. We had 100 degrees Celsius max on the M4 Max and 85 Celsius on the M2 Ultra, which of course means that it's a lot weaker in terms of those cores. I also tested power draw and this right here will blow your mind. Peak power on the M4 Max, 61.98 watts for the CPU compared to 72.44 watts. Yes, this Ultra takes more power and it was slower. So that is just kind of nuts. And this right here explains it. We had 3.89 peak performance core wattage throughout the test. That's all core compared to 3.26 and neither of them throttled in any way. They were just glued at those clock speeds. So in terms of raw CPU multi-core performance, the M4 Max is destroying the M2 Ultra and it just blows my mind. You think you need an Ultra chip? This was already overkill. This is even better. You don't need an Ultra, just stick with the Max. And well, you know why? I also tested Logic Pro, which is a low test of how many tracks you can play at once. Believe it or not, 405 tracks on the M4 Max compared to 320. So that's another good proof for you. Programmers out there, yes, we did test Xcode Benchmark and this just broke the record. 77 seconds to do Xcode Benchmark compared to 87. 10 seconds savings. That is just insane considering the price difference that you can get this thing for 2,500 if you stick with the base SSD. Now for photo editors out there, this is where it actually flips surprisingly, but only for this crazy test. This is 500 42 megapixel raw photos, which is a huge, huge photo editing export test. And here is where the M2 Ultra actually won. Three minutes, 15 for the Ultra, 413 for the M4 Max. Why did this happen? Well, there is only one reason. This test is very heavy on memory bandwidth and the M2 Ultra has more. 800 gigabytes per second compared to 546. That is the reason why the Ultra One in this test. But still, it's not too far behind, and I'm sure you probably don't do that massive of exports all the time. Now, this will matter a lot for AI and local LLM workstation workflows, whatever, where the M2 Ultra will probably be faster because it has up to 192 gigs of RAM compared to 128, and the memory bandwidth is faster. So definitely watch some other videos like from Alex Zscan. He's gonna make some on that if you're interested. And this is where I'd recommend skipping the M2 Ultra, get the M3 Ultra. This thing goes up to 512. It's gonna be a lot faster, so we'll be testing this as well. Now moving on to 3D rendering in Blender. This is the party tug test. And this also blew my mind. 27 seconds on the M4 Max compared to 41. It just completely destroyed it. If you kind of expand that test bigger, you're gonna have a lot of savings with this cheaper machine. And then yes, we also tested video editing in Final Cut Pro 11. This is a five minute HVC export, which is the most common format that most people will shoot and edit in, including us. And here, yes, 
the max lost. This took one minute compared to 42 seconds. Why? Well, because this has double the encoders and they can all work together to encode. But this is actually pretty impressive. It used to take longer. The new M4 cores have basically newer encoders that are faster, so that's why it's not as big of a difference now. And this also has AV1 decoders as well, which is cool. And then our final test, which is our craziest test. This is our five minute 8K Canon R5 RAW. And yes, the M4 Max won by basically a minute a minute faster than the Ultra, and this is the craziest test that we have that fully loads the CPU, fully loads the GPU, it's insane, and the Max chip won, believe it or not. So with all those tests done, here is my final conclusion. Forget about getting an Ultra chip, whether it's a used M2 Ultra that you might find online or the new M3 Ultra, these are overkill, especially since the M4 Max beats the M2 Ultra for a much lower price. So this is gonna be overkill for a lot of you people. So if you're thinking about the Ultra, forget it, save some money, grab this instead, spend the extra cash on upgrading the chip like we did, maybe go up to one terabyte of SSD so you don't have any issues with apps or anything else. And if you really want more, seriously, just get this four terabyte custom DIY SSD 500 bucks instead of 1200. I'll have the Amazon links down below and I'll also point you guys to the video we did on how to build this yourself and the testing as well, which was very interesting. So there you go, that about sums up the M4 Max. It's just basically insane. Apple killed it with this chip and it's more than you will need. So I guess it's now time to test out the M3 Ultra. If you wanna see that, subscribe above, check out a couple of those videos right there, including the new iPad 11 video, the M4 MacBook Air, which is insane value that we just did. Thanks for watching guys, and we'll see you in the next video.